Hello and a very warm welcome from Digital Church coming to you from East Solent and Downs Circuit of the Methodist Church in Southern England. I'm Bill Stilwell. We begin with some words from Psalm 145. I will proclaim your greatness, my God and King. I will thank you forever and ever. Every day I will thank you. I will praise you for ever and ever. The Lord is great and is to be highly praised. His greatness is beyond understanding. What you have done will be praised from one generation to the next. They will proclaim your mighty acts. They will speak of your glory and majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful deeds. We begin by saying, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as the body of Christ, we thank you for revealing your mighty works of power throughout the earth. We thank you for the renewal of our lives, the greatest miracle of all to us. Thank you for making plain your presence amongst us. You are our God. We seek to meet with you now. Our souls thirst for you. Our lives long for you in this parched and weary land where there's no water. Lord, we've met with you in your sanctuary and in the world around and gazed upon your power and glory. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How may we praise you? We will praise you as long as we live. We will lift up our lives to you in prayer. Thanks be to you, our Lord and our God. Amen. Lord God, your love for humanity, present in the beginning of all things, extends throughout history and touches even our lives. Your love sees failings and forgives. Your love feels pain and wipes away our tears. Your love knows grief and comforts the sorrowful. Your love sees sin and still loves the sinner. Forgive us when we fail to live lives that reflect your love. Forgive us the many times when we take for granted all that you have done for us. Transform us through your Spirit and grant us the power to serve you this day and all days in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The story of the raising of Lazarus. Now, Jesus has been told that his friend Lazarus is on his deathbed. Instead of rushing to him, his home in Bethesda, to see him one last time, though, Jesus dilly-dallies so long that when he finally arrives, Lazarus has already died. His sisters, Mary and Martha, are distraught. Jesus lingers at some distance from their home until Martha and then Mary come out to meet him. And so we read from John chapter 11, beginning at verse 32. Mary arrived where Jesus was, and as soon as she saw him, she fell at his feet. Lord, she said, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus saw her weeping, and he saw how the people with her were weeping also. His heart was touched, and he was deeply moved. Where have you buried him? he asked them. Come and see, Lord, they answered. Jesus wept. See how much he loved him, the people said. But some of them said, he gave sight to the blind man, didn't he? Could he not have kept Lazarus from dying? Deeply moved once more, Jesus went to the tomb, which was a cave with a stone placed at the entrance. Take the stone away, Jesus ordered. Martha, the dead man's sister, answered, There'll be a bad smell, Lord. He's been buried four days. 
Jesus said to her, Didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believed? They took the stone away. Jesus looked up and said, I thank you, Father, that you listened to me. I know that you always listen to me, but I say this for the sake of the people here, so that they will believe that you sent me. After he had said this, he called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. He came out, his hands and feet wrapped in grave clothes and with a cloth around his face. Untie him, Jesus told them, and let him go. We sing, Jesus is Lord. The word miracle can sound to our ears like simply a, a magic trick. There are two Greek words in the Gospels used to refer to what we call a miracle. One means a work of power, the other one means a sign. There are numberless ways in which God reveals his presence in the signs he gives us of the works of power. It, easy to ignore or undervalue them. So I wrote down some of the signs I remember in my life. And as I share them with you, I hope you recall memories of God's works of power in your own life. I've seen miracles. I've seen the blood-red sunset and the velvet grey dawn. I've seen the wind whipping the ocean's waves and the tide quietly lapping the beach. I've seen the heavy clouds lashing the streets with rain and the silent white clouds in a summer sky. I have seen miracles. I've seen ancient valleys formed from molten rock now being ploughed for new harvests. I've seen places of execution 
now become a place for happy tourists. I've seen altars of human sacrifice made into altars where believers of peace now worship. I've seen miracles. I've seen an eternal flame shining on in the darkness of a deserted cathedral. I've seen despair change to hope by a warm embrace. I've seen a hope shared by a casual gift from a passing stranger. I have seen miracles. I've seen the pain of a dying woman turn to a soul at peace. I've seen the look of terror of a mind in torment turn to a gentle smile. I've seen a man who felt himself condemned discover he was a man loved by God. I have seen miracles. I've seen a man trapped by addiction who was released through prayer. I've seen lives transformed from thoughts of dying to convictions of new beginnings. I've seen people once divided, now united by compassion. I've seen miracles. I've seen Christian fellowships about to close, renewed in worship, hope and service. I've seen tears at the loss of a loved one turn to laughter at the memories. I've seen those who esteem themselves lowly know themselves highly esteemed by God. I have seen miracles. I've seen a life renewed by a single gesture, a single word. I've seen the miracle of dying and the miracle of birth. I've seen eternity distilled into a few moments by listening with love. I have seen miracles. I've seen terror for tomorrow transformed into joy for today. I've seen the greyness of the world turned into God's kaleidoscope of colour. I've seen myself enabled to do by God those things I could never have done by myself. I have seen miracles. I've seen people care for those they loved when they didn't know how to. I've seen people face the terrors of life with weakness and rise with victory. I have seen heroism in lives known to God alone. I have seen miracles. I have seen the wind of God's Spirit move the trees on a windless day. I have seen God speak to me in prayer when I had no words to give. I have seen God speak to me through a writer I have never met. I have seen miracles. I have seen purpose in some of the pain I have faced. I have seen growth in some of the failure I have met. I have seen God trusting me when I failed to trust Him. I have seen miracles. I have seen the dead branches of winter and the new life of spring. I have seen an old man dying, passing on the torch of faith to a younger life. I've seen memories passed on to build new memories for years to come. I've seen miracles. I've seen strangers treat me as a friend. I've traveled to foreign lands and been greeted as a brother. I've returned home and felt at peace. I've seen miracles. I've been confused and known that the Creator understands it all. I've seen one set of footprints in the sand and known that God is carrying me. I've feared for tomorrow and discovered that God sustains me each day. I have seen miracles. I've seen life collapse on me and found life in abundance. I've seen the chasm of failure turned into the bridge of opportunity. I've seen the darkness of despair turned into the shimmering candle of hope. I, of all people, am most greatly blessed. I have seen miracles. We sing, 
Sing of the Lord's goodness. Sing of the Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom, come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever, faithful to the end of days. Come then, all you nations, sing of the Lord's goodness, melodies of praise. Our prayers for the needs of the world and we begin with words inspired by John chapter 17. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, all that are yours are the Father's and all that are the Father's are yours and you are glorified in them. Lord Jesus, we do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in you through our word, that we may all be one, as you are in the Father and the Father is in you. May we also be one in you, that the world may believe that God the Father has sent you. You, Lord Jesus, have given us the glory which the Father gave you, that we may be one even as you are one, you in us and the Father in you, that we may be perfect in unity and that the world may know that the Father has sent you and loves us as he has loved you. Amen. To the words within our darkest night, would you like to respond, let your light shine? Within our darkest night, let your light shine. Let us pray. God of all creation, 
You hold the depths of the earth in your hands. You are closer to us than the air we breathe. Fill our souls with your love and light. Give us strength and courage to reflect that love and light in the world. Let us never shrink back from who we are in you or hide your light inside ourselves. Renew in us a sense of joy, painting the dark shadows around us with your light, your love and your salvation. Hear us today as we pray for a world too often darkened by hatred, evil, power and greed. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. God of power and might, your broken world cries out from the depths, a world dominated by the darkness of war, terror, pain and suffering. We bring you the deepening conflicts in the Middle East and the borders of Ukraine. Cast your light down the darkened corridors of power that your peace may reign. We share the pain and anguish of those who mourn and those who have had to flee from their homes, countries and livelihoods, who risk their lives desperate for a new start, free from fear and war. May they see your light, feel your strength and power, and know the truth of your promise that we shall not be overcome by the dark shadows of life or the darkness of human nature. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. God of compassion and grace, we share with you our love and concern for people in a dark place today. We pray for the victims of violence and hatred on our streets and in our homes and for their friends and loved ones. We pray that they will find your strength in the compassion and love of those around them we pray for tolerance in our society. We pray for all who suffer hate crimes because of their faith or culture. Let your light shine through the darkness of all their pain and their suffering. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. God of life, we ask for your healing power on those who are enduring pain and illness. We remember before you those who weigh heavily on our hearts and bring you those who mourn. We remember, too, those for whom a change in their lives is bringing with it a new hope and the shining light of a happy new beginning. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. God of love and hope, renew in us a deeper sense of who we are in you. Help us to be aware of your presence each and every day. Make us instruments of your love and praise. May our words, actions and lives be living examples of your forgiving, healing, life-giving love. For your name's sake. Amen. We sing, I, the Lord of sea and sky.
we pray. May your day be blessed by moments of quietness, light in your darkness, strength in your weakness, grace in your meekness, joy in your gladness, peace in your stillness. May your day be blessed in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.